Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Supreme Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This week we're coming to you from the Wolverhampton Central Library. We are here because there's a special exhibition on display called You'll Never Go Back Now. It's about the Irish people who came to make their home here in Wolverhampton in the 1950s and 60s. It's their story. It tells us how they got involved with the GA, how they supported the Emerald Club, how they got involved in construction, in the nursing profession, working on the buses and much more. This exhibition represents their life and times in Wolverhampton. The idea came about two years back. I was at the Emerald Club in Wolverhampton where they got a thriving Thursday club for senior citizens. And I was up the ladder taking a photograph of them and I looked at the crowd below and I thought, has anybody documented their history since they came to Wolverhampton? I, I checked, nobody had. Other cities, Coventry and Birmingham, had major exhibitions and funding for projects given the history of the Irish in their respective cities. Wolverhampton's never had anything documenting the Irish uh, arriving in the city, which is a shame. So I thought we could do something about it. And with limited funding, I came up with the idea of asking the people. We only picked about two dozen people from the Senior Citizens Club, and we asked them if they'd mind digging out their old black and white photographs when, it, when they came to Wolverhampton in the 50s or 60s. And eventually done that. And we then asked them for a bit of history of when they came what work they've done, what part of Ireland they're from, and then we coupled it with a current day photograph of them as they are now. We have to say the Central Library here and Rob and the rest of the crew since day one, we searched for over a year, 15 months nearly, to find a venue and we got turned down, it wasn't suitable, whatever, and our last resort was when we came in and met Annie Owens, who you'll probably meet later, and Annie's dad is from Dublin, and immediately we mentioned, she says, this gallery's been refurbished, we'd be glad to have it here. So we, at last we found the, the venue for it and we had an official opening just before the lockdown. We had the local MP, Pat McFadden, doing the official opening, parents from Donegal, and we'd sold the bread and a whole lot. So we managed to get a week in the exhibition running before the lockdown. And since then, we're in lockdown now and the library's just letting people back in again. Now, I know you've been heavily involved in all this, but how did you come up with the name for the exhibition? Well, I remember, I'm old enough to remember now that when we'd meet up years ago in the 50s and 60s, um, 
the, the people have settled down, whatever city they were in in this co country, and they settled down Mary, and then a, a club or anything, they say, Brenda, you never go back now. So the saying was a popular one, you never go back now. So I thought we'd come up with the idea, and we asked a firm in Warwick, and they came up, I said, this is the design I want. And basically, as you probably know, it's the stern of a ship, leaving Ireland in the 50s, with a young man and woman waving goodbye to Ireland. And then we just superimposed the title over that. Of course, it's a very sad looking photograph. M many people experienced that back in the day. It had to be, they said, why is it grey all over, except for the tricolour? And I said, because grey represents a sombre occasion, leaving Ireland. It was a very sad occasion. Grey represents that sadness. But the colour, of course, showed that it was still I Ireland they were leaving. Now, Michael McGarvey, of course, he's heavily involved with the Emerald Club. And his uh, son, I think, had some involvement here as well. His son uh, owns and runs Warwick Science in Warwick. And we decided we wanted somebody who could actually do a good job in it. So we had a run of that. The library actually here had it in their glass cases. And it's caught on because they said, oh, God, that's, we remember saying that to everybody. Oh, you never go back now. So I said, that title stuck. I don't think it's been used anywhere else. Annie, can you tell me, how long have you been involved here with the Central Library? Well, I've been here um, 44 years next month, so I started when I was 18 as a library assistant, and I think I've had almost every job in the library service. At the moment, I'm the assistant chief librarian, so, yeah, I love it here, obviously. I've stayed, so I must like it. I'm sure you see lots of uh, people coming in to look around all your exhibitions. Well, this area where we've got the Irish exhibition is quite new. We've only had the balcony in place for this type of thing as a community space. Um, I think it's three years, but Robert will confirm that in a moment. Um, and our first one was reggae albums. We had an Agatha Christie event. And, um, and then this fella turned up, Brendan turned up and said, uh, we, need, we need a space. And he's referred to me from Ka by Carol, my colleague at the art gallery. And as soon as he said it's an Irish event, I said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. My dad's from Dublin, yeah, let's do it. And uh, he was very pleased with me, so he's gone from that, really. Well, I know Brenda told me you were very supportive in getting all this uh, exhibition here at the Central Library. And, of course, it's going to run now for quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, unfortunately, last year we got the event going on um, St Patrick's Day, um, but we went into lockdown the week after. So we got all this lovely exhibition ready, and we had a great day, and then we went into lockdown. So it's been standing here for over a year. Um, but hopefully, if Boris, Boris gives the go-ahead, we're going to run the exhibition through the summer from hopefully June the 21st to the end of July. It's a free um, event. People can come to public libraries. They are free facilities. Please remember that. And as well as doing books, we do IT. But this is our baby now, this exhibition space. It is for the community. <laughs> I came, I actually came to Wolverhampton in 1956. Uh, it was a friend of the family, a priest that was here in Wolverhampton and encouraged me to come to Wolverhampton. I came to New Cross Hospital in Wolverhampton. There was a lot of Irish nurses there and we all supported each other. We all cried together because we were homesick. I had a wonderful career, wonderful training, enjoyed every minute of it and uh, qualified in 1959. I was a staff nurse on the children's ward and I was a staff nurse in the operating theatres. I was made a sister in the operating theatres and um, I worked there for quite some time and um, I left. I got married in 1962. Well, I had two children then and I went back to the women's hospital in Wolverhampton as a night sister. I used to work two nights a week at the weekend when my husband was at home. And uh, then I had another child and um, I stayed at home for a while and then I went back to New Cross Hospital as a night sister and worked there I think about 10 years. And then I um, decided that I wanted to do, I decided I had enough of working night duty that I wanted to work days and I decided on district nursing. So I went off and did my district nurse training and uh, qualified obviously and worked there for what, 22 years. My goodness, you've dedicated your life to the nursing and caring for people. Yes, and I enjoyed every day, never had any doubts. In my day of nursing, there was no machines. You had to be able to recognise when a patient wasn't well 
you ha everything was done manually, temperatures, pulses, the whole lot, whereas today it's much different. I mean, the nurses today, they do fantastic work, as we did in our day. <laughs> but I retired in 1999, and I've never looked back. You're a wonderful baker as well, aren't you? Yeah, I make soda bread for when people have celebrations, like birthdays, uh, anniversaries, and sometimes weddings, you know, for the, for the evening part of the wedding. Uh, I would make some soda bread for them. Well, thank you so much. We saw you there earlier on presenting us with one of your lovely soda bread cakes. And we look forward to having that tonight, Nancy, in remembrance of you here in Wolverhampton. You enjoy that, Martin. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Bridget, you're a very talented musician. How did you begin to learn the accordion? Well, I learned it when I was about four, four and a half years of age. And my first tune was Far Away Places. And it was on an old one, an old melodeon with the stoppers on the top. Tell me what it was like for you when you left County Tipperary in 1963. Tell me about that and you arrived in Birmingham. Uh, it was very strange, completely different situation. Um, People are different, the faces were different, uh, but I did come to a job, as I came to a job on the buses, which was, um, became a sort of a family, it was Lee Hall Garage, and Lee Hall was uh, very welcoming. And of course the buses means a lot to you, because you met your late husband Dave there. Well he was a driver, I was a conductress, and we met through that, and we also, I was both sort of involved with the union as well, and joined the union there, and he was union chairman there at the time. So why did you move from Birmingham to Wolverhampton in 1970, I think? 71. Birmingham City Transport, as it was in them days, became Travel West Midlands, and uh, we moved over from Birmingham to Wolverhampton, and it was just part of an agreement that they had between the garages that some of the people that was with Birmingham City Transport came over to Wolverhampton because the rules were different. You had a, a good job of course with Marston's Brewery and you worked there for a long time. Tell me about that. 35 years I gave. I was housekeeper and I also done health and safety for the breweries as well. Now I know your late husband Dave sadly passed away a couple of years ago. What is life like since for you and have you got family here in Wolverhampton? I have a son and a daughter in Wolverhampton when they're fairly close to me so I'm I'm okay. Brendan Farrow was telling me that you've made a big contribution to the exhibition here today and you put up all this bunting as well and decorated the place. Well, I'm quite a lot of it. I collected these other people just giving us some things to put into the exhibition as well. Like Dorian and Joe, which I spoke to earlier on today. They brought some stuff over and another friend of ours, Brendan Collis, gave us a few bits and pieces from his house as well that to put in to help to build it up. All these lovely stories tells us how much of a contribution the Irish community has made to life here in Wolverhampton. Now we're going to take a little break, don't go away, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Supreme Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract markers, including large hotel groups and small family run business. <laughs> Mr. 
No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Welcome back. Now this week we're telling you a story about a special exhibition at the Wolverhampton Central Library which is called You'll Never Go Back. It's about the Irish people here in Wolverhampton. Now I'm off to chat to Chrissy Murphy who recently celebrated her 91st birthday. Chrissy, tell me about immigrating from County Limerick. I was working in Shannon Airport for about six months and the four of us decided to come over to England and get jobs. So I got a job in, in Clapham Common in London with Jewish people. They had a restaurant and I worked as a waitress. I stopped there for nearly two years and then I had relations in Wolverhampton and then I worked on the buses in Wolverhampton. And I met my husband, uh, well he was a neighbour of, of us at home. And one day he was cutting the hair for my father when he was 18 and I was um, about 10, 9 or 10 at the time. I was running around the rake with no shoes on me. And I think it's what he wanted to more grub or whatever it was, you know, when we used to have the billy cans and take him to tea at the... And then he said, he looked at me and he said, I'm going to marry you when you get older. And of course, then he went, I was only a child, and then he went back to England. And then I was in England then, like, and I came home at Easter on holidays. And in the meantime, he came over on holidays. He was 29 at this time. And I was at Mass one Sunday morning, and he was at Mass as well. And he came, we came out of Mass, and he said to this woman, uh, do you see that girl there? He says, he says, will you go in and tell her I want her? So she went in and she said, there's a man outside, he wants to see you. And I said, oh, I don't know who it is. And so we, my auntie was there at the time, and she hid my shoes so that I couldn't go out. <laughs> so I had to walk out barefoot, and then he says, uh, um, so, so are you coming out of Mass? She says, he says, I know we've met before. He said, but um, you were only a child then. And um, we, he had a bike, a big mountain bike. And now he said, do you want to come for a drive on the bike? So I says, all right then. So I sat up in the, in the bed of the bike. And off we went. We walked out the country and he went into this little shop and he bought six penny worth of sweets. <laughs> which was a lot then. And we had a drive. And then he brought me back home and he said, he came down again in the evening and he said, will you uh, come to a dance tonight? And the dance was up, up, the, up, the, up the mountains. So we went up the mountains in the bike, in the bed of the bike. And we gave the night there dancing and then we came. Uh, next day he was going back to England and he went back to Manchester and I went back to London. He, as I told you that before, he came to, he came to Wolverhampton then. And uh, it all started from there. We got married in 1951, in August 1951. And uh, we lived in rooms for a while. And, and then we, we bought a little house, like a small little house. And, and then, then I had the children. The first child we had was a, a girl. And she died when she was eight months old. Then I happened to have then another boy. And I'd, I've got three daughters and one son. And then I had another son who died as well. He was 24, like he died from asthma. And sadly, your husband passed away a number of years ago. He passed away in 2001. And tell me about your time working on the buses here. Oh, I had a nice time working on the buses. I worked at, um, went on the Penn area and all the time. And I was there for, I was there for about 12 months. And then I, then I was tired of it, so I gave it up then. And it was then I went to the post office. And I worked at the post office then for 15 years, and deliver, sorting and delivering. And it was quite enjoyable. They were very, very nice people at the post office. And I still have a good pension for them. <laughs> now, I know your son, Philip, yes. is very heavily involved with the Emerald Club here in Wolverhampton. Yes, he's, he's the secretary. Yes, he has a lot to do with it, and the opening and closing of it. And he's practically running it all by himself. He's doing very good. And when you worked on the post, because you were a post lady, weren't you? Yes. Did, did many dogs bite you? <laughs> Only one. And the one dog that bit me, he came from next door. I was going in the drive to one house, and this old dog happened to come out the gate, and he jumped, he jumped, over, the, he jumped over the wall and, and bit me in the back of my leg. <laughs> that must be painful. I, it was, yes. I had to go to the hospital and have it treated. What happened to the dog? <laughs> So the dog is still living. <laughs> the dog died. 
and the dog died, I had him stuffed. And I believe you've got him here with you today. I have, I have, yes, he's in a little lead. Well, listen, Christy, lovely to meet you today. Thank you for telling us a lovely, lovely story about your life and time. Yeah, thank you very much. Doreen, tell me about when did you uh, emigrate from County Sligo? We emigrated on September the 3rd, 1962. And the reason we did was because where we worked was burnt down. We thought we'd bring our wedding forward and we got married and then we came across to South Wales to Chepstow. So when did you come to Wolverhampton, Joe? Came to Wolverhampton 40 years ago. And I know that you worked on a very special bridge called the First Seven Bridge. Yes, what was that like working on that? It must be a bit dangerous, was it? I worked as an industrial radiographer, so it wasn't dangerous. Now, tell me a little bit, uh, Doreen, about your family and your family growing up here in Wolverhampton. Uh, they liked Wolverhampton, I have to say. But then, like everything else, they got jobs and they move on. So our eldest lad moved back to Ireland, where he married an Irish girl and has two kids. Jacqueline and Martin live in Telford, but unfortunately they haven't got any children. Our youngest, Joseph, moved to down south to Exeter with his wife and two children. Grandchildren? You must love seeing them. Yes, we've got four, two boys and two girls. And Joe, I believe you worked in Saudi Arabia for a while. Tell me about that. I did. I worked in Saudi Arabia for six, six years in Riyadh. Temperatures were, were very high, dry weather, but I didn't like Saudi Arabia. The money was good, but I didn't like it. How often do you get back to County Sligo? Well, we used to go back every year, but since Joe's had an accident, we don't go back very often. We're more inclined to go to America and Spain because our daughter and her husband takes us. Yeah. So we don't have any bother with luggage and that. They carry it all. Well, when I was at work, I had an accident and the air ambulance came and picked me up, took me to the hospital. And after that, I just thought they were a very good cause to raise money for. And of course, Mary, that was a very worrying time for you. Oh, we were frightened. But thank God, the hospital was very good. The air ambulance does and wonderful work. Oh, the air ambulance are marvellous. You both worked on the buses. Tell me about your time on the buses, uh, Patsy. Well, I was a conductor to start with, and then I went driving on the trolley buses first, and then on the motor buses. When I came here first, I was in good years. And uh, a few months after, they were looking for recruits for the conductors. So I went and done a test, passed it, and that's what I've done ever since. Yeah. <laughs> well done. And I know that you're both heavily involved and supported the Emerald Club here in Wolverhampton for many years. Patsy started off with the football and it just escalated from there. Now, Patsy, Mary just touched on it there. I know that back in 1960, you formed St Mary's GA Club here in Wolverhampton, the only GA Club here still in Wolverhampton. You must be very proud of that. Yeah, we're very proud. Yeah, they just won the championship a couple of weeks ago. There, it was last year's championship. It was cancelled in May because of the virus. But uh, the final was played there a couple of weeks ago, and they won that. How difficult was it to start a football team in Wolverhampton back in 1960? It wasn't really too bad because uh, there's another chap on me, Frank Rouse. We, we played for Mitchells in Birmingham in the late 50s. And then we were training down in the West Park here in Wolverhampton in the evenings and there was maybe 30 or more chaps there kicking about. So I thought there's enough here to make a team. Carried on from there. Now you're both heavily featured in the exhibition here about your life and times in Wolverhampton. What do you think about that? Oh, it's just lovely for the likes of what Brendan is doing, because there's never been any recognition of anything of what we did. And it's just nice now to think that the generations come along can go and look and see how it all started. I've, I've been here since I was 16. Um, it was sort of a, a bit of a last minute decision. I, my parents wanted me to stay on at school um, and as a compromise my dad said if you can get a job then we'll say no more about it. So I got a job 
sort of very last minute at the library service and I've been here ever since and I've been very very fortunate because the City Council has funded me to do my degree and to go further and now 40 years later I'm Chief Librarian so I feel like I've been in the service a very long time. And of course you're here in a very iconic building as well. It is, it's um, a grade two star listed building. In 1902 was when it was, was built. It's, it's a beautiful building. For people that want to come along and look at the Irish exhibition, but not just the Irish exhibition, of course you've got other exhibitions going on. Tell me a little bit about your opening time and where exactly you're situated in Wolverhampton. So the Central Library is in the, the main city centre. Um, it's in Snow Hill. Um, it's virtually opposite the main Manda Centre and Wolfram Centre. The, Currently the, the opening hours are restricted because of, of COVID. Um, normally we're open from 10 till 7, Monday to Thursday, 10 till 5 on Friday and 10 till 2 on Saturday. Uh, as I say, we are working restricted hours currently and it is by appointment only. So if people want to come and look at the exhibition, just give us a call on 01902 552025 and we can arrange something for them to come and have a look. Excellent. Lovely to meet you, Robert. Lovely to meet you too. We've met so many wonderful Irish people here today who is making sure that the great work that's been done by the Irish community here in Wolverhampton is not going to be forgotten. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Now Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock with his show from County Mayo and we are here as normal with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. Until then, from us all here in Wolverhampton, see you soon. <laughs>